The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Many tales have been told of strange happenings which take place in castles. What more appropriate setting than an enormous edifice with hidden chambers, unexplored turrets, and dangerous balconies? Usually, the setting is England or Scotland, where castles abound. But the setting for our drama is much closer to home. The castle we're about to visit is in New England on the Connecticut River. It contains all the mystery and more than many of its antecedents. Our mystery drama, Nightmare in Gillette Castle, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Elizabeth Pennell and stars Kevin McCarthy and Jada Rowland. Many New Yorkers, Jim and Pamela Watson, enjoy getting out on weekends to explore the countryside. It's amazing how quickly you can get from the big city to rural communities, rolling hills, wooded forests, or discover unexpected places of historic interest. Jim is a Sherlock Holmes buff, and he has heard that a certain state park in Connecticut houses treasures which attract devotees of Sir Arthur Conan Doyle from all over the world. We begin with an ordinary Saturday excursion. Jim and Pamela Watson are totally unprepared for the bizarre events which are about to take place. Jim, slow down. You're driving too fast. Honey, we've already wasted too much time. Well, what's the hurry? The park, Pam. I'd planned on spending several hours there. I'd rather go antiquing. Yeah, but you... Oh, hey, here's the turnout. You see the sign? Gillette Castle State Park. Beautiful grounds. And... (gasps) Look! Look! Uh, yeah, I see it. There is a castle. I thought it would be just a model, but it's a real one. Hey, what a pile of stone. I think we can go inside. Uh, that's what we're here for. Now, uh, why don't you go see if we need tickets to get in? I'll park the car. I'm here, Jim. Please hurry. This place is spooky. Did you uh, get the tickets? No. I came through that big gate and up this passageway. The door's open, see? It goes into a huge, dark room, but nobody's here. Oh, that's strange. Hello? Hello in there? Jim, is there a Mr. Gillette who lives in this castle? There was. He died back in 1937. Is someone down there? Uh, yes, uh, we we want to see the castle. Well, I'm afraid you're too late. I, I was just coming to close the door. We're short-handed today, and I'm conducting the last tour. Uh, you'd better come back some other time. Oh, please, can't we join the tour, even if it's already started? Well, I suppose so. I, I left the group up in the library, but come along. Follow me. Jim, who was Mr. Gillette? (laughs) Honey, don't let the guide know how dumb you are. He was just the greatest American actor who ever played the role of Sherlock Holmes. Well, Mr. Gillette was much more than an actor. He was also a playwright and an inventor. He designed everything in this castle himself, inside and out. It's so gloomy. Now, we dim the lights after demonstrations in the Great Hall to save energy. It's too bad you missed the stained glass. But come along, and we'll join the others. way, ladies and gentlemen. We don't have time to see everything. There are 24 rooms of varying shapes and sizes. Look, Jim, the hallways have street names. Mr. Gillette's bedroom opens off this gallery. He could observe whoever was down below by looking toward those mirrors I showed you over the French door. His bedroom's not exactly what you'd call cozy. It would give me claustrophobia. Say, that could be a sliding panel over there. Oh, you're very observant. Behind it are switches whereby Mr. Gillette could control all the electric lights. He was also able to cut off the telephones when he wanted to. Hmm. Ah, and over here is a panel you could never find unless you knew exactly where to look. Now watch what happens. 
Oh, it's a secret staircase. Where does it go? Uh, this one leads to the tower, where Mr. Gillette enjoyed his magnificent view of the river and surrounding hills. But we must hurry along. Now, follow me, and I will show you the best room of all. Oh, hold on, Sam. I want to see that museum room and library where they've already been. It, it's uh, back this way. Photographs everywhere. Oh, there's one of John Barrymore. Hmm. These playbills. Oh, and a glass case filled with letters. Oh, here's one from Conan Doyle. And the books. Take a look at the titles. <laughs> I could spend days in here. We better catch up with the tour. I don't care if we don't see anything else. I do. I'm going uh, to... Uh-oh. Oh, the lights. They're going out. Yeah, it must be a warning to leave. Uh, quick, we better catch up with the others. Jim, I'm scared. Steady, Pam. There's still some daylight left. Now, we'll find our way to the front door. Come on. Oh, thank goodness I hear them. Yeah, yeah we're going in the right direction. Where is everybody? Wait for us. Oh, let's run for it, Pam. They can't have gone far. If we bang on the door and yell as loud as we can. This door is made of steel. And these stone walls must be two or three feet thick. What are we going to do? I can't imagine anything worse than spending the night in this scary place. Besides, I'm hungry. There has to be a guard on duty. Well, he's being awfully quiet. No, no, I mean outside, patrolling the grounds. If I could just find a light switch and attract his attention. I saw candles on a table in that place the guide called the Great Hall. Oh, but I'd be afraid to go in there. Well, here, uh, take my hand and show me. There. Do you have a match? Uh, yeah, right here. No need to Look. light a candle when I can flood the room with colorful <laughs> illumination. Oh. oh! It's like a stage set. Well, where, where did that voice come from? Uh, uh, over there by the stairs. He must be a guard. Oh, thank, thank goodness you're here. We were afraid we'd been locked in. I am not in the habit of entertaining uninvited guests. Who are you? Uh, oh, uh, this is my wife, Pamela, and I'm James Watson. Your last name appeals to me. Need I introduce myself? You... Well, we thought you were a guard. But you're not dressed like one. I should think not. I'm rather fond of this dressing gown. Uh, then you must be the son of Mr. William Gillette. No, I have no son. My name is Gillette. And I alone am master of this castle. Well, then, then please, Mr. Gillette, will you unbar the door and let us go home? Certainly not. Certainly not. First of all, I want to know how you got in here. Well, it was the uh, last tour of the day, and we were late. And, and then uh, we became so interested in all those marvelous things in your library. Well, this is preposterous. I do not allow tours through my castle ever. But th th there, there was... Never a... mind, never mind. You're talking nonsense. But this is one of those evenings when companionship would be quite pleasant. Oh, we must be on our way. We didn't have much lunch, and I'm... If you have the proper qualifications, you are welcome to partake of my dinner and spend the night. Oh, uh, no, we uh, couldn't do that. Oh, I uh, like the idea of dinner. <laughs> well, we wouldn't want to impose. Uh... The young lady seems to admire my light fixtures. Oh, yes, such pretty bits of stained glass. All supplied by my visitors. What you might call a ticket of admission to my hospitality. I don't understand. These lampshades are my own handiwork, but the bits and pieces were all contributed by my guests. Oh, if we'd known when we were back in that antique store, which... I'll wager that you have something with you which will suffice. I'm afraid not. Well, it's up to you. Either you stay as my guest, or I will have you apprehended for housebreaking. You wouldn't dare. Watch your language, young man. I'll leave you alone for three minutes to think it over. <coughs> ah, Miss Stapleton. Oh, that, that cat startled me. Come along, Miss Stapleton. He meant it, Pam. Now, look through your purse. See if there's something. That man is mad. You heard what he called his cat. Sure. Miss Stapleton, straight from the Hound of the Baskervilles. <laughs> I'm beginning to enjoy myself. Oh, and say... What is it now? In, in my pocket, look. My sunglasses. Colored glass. Uh, you think this will do for our ticket of admission? I see oh. you are making progress. May I hold those spectacles up to the light? Oh, sure. Hmm. A rather pleasant blue color. Yes, these will be quite usable. Now, what does your wife have to offer? 
Oh, but couldn't a pair of glasses be from both of us? No, 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 no. It doesn't work that way. Look in your purse, Pam. You gotta have something. Compact lipstick. Oh, here's my key ring with this pendant. Ah, ah, a ruby. It's only glass. Exactly. So now you are welcome. Before our repast, we'll climb to the tower and enjoy the last glimmer of fading light. <laughs> It's breathtaking. Oh, I wish we could have seen it in the daytime. Why, you will. Tomorrow morning. Oh, really? We must leave after dinner. No one ever leaves here after nightfall. Jim, we have to get home. Tell him that. Oh, relax, Pam. Tomorrow's Sunday. We don't have anywhere to go. And there's so many things I'd like to ask Mr. Gillette. That's more like it. Mrs. Hudson is a very efficient housekeeper, and I'm sure she has everything ready now. Uh, is her name really Mrs. Hudson? I'm pleased that you're acquainted with Mr. Sherlock Holmes' landlady. When I advertised for a housekeeper, I specified that her name be Hudson. I suppose if this admirable woman's name had been anything else, I should have called her that anyway. Well, this should rouse her. Such a long, long hallway. Mm. Yeah. I think you'll find this room satisfactory. Please note that every door except the steel entrance to the castle opens without a sound. And the light switch works this way. Oh, look at all those books. Mm. <laughs> no sleep for me tonight. Ah, uh, oh dear me, they're even taking over in here. That makes 11, no, no, 13 cats on the premises. I suppose you'd object to his staying under your bed. Oh, he's so, so big. Oh, no, 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 no. Simmer down, simmer down. That's it. Climb up. Uh, climb up on Daddy. I'll take you along. Now, should you need them? There are candles over there. But it's such a, a brightly lighted room. One never knows. And if you feel uneasy in a strange house, you'd better take this. A revolver? An old-fashioned pistol. No, please, Mr. Gillette. I, I'm terrified of guns. Here. Yeah. You take it, Mr. Watson? Uh, I'd rather not. This pistol's carved of wood. Made it myself. Couldn't fire even a blank cartridge. When it was used in a stage play, the sound effects had to come from off stage. Hmm. <laughs> Certainly looks like the genuine article. It's yours. To keep. And now, I'll bid you good night and be off to Europe. <laughs> to, to Europe? That's what I call my special hideaway. A room where no one can follow and the rest of the world disappears. Pleasant dreams. Jim, won't you please turn off those blinding lights and come to bed? Ooh, much sleepier than I thought. Oh, all that food and drink. Can't focus on the books. Uh, uh, yeah. Bed's more comfortable than it looks. It's shivery in the dark. Hold my hand. Mm. Sleep well. Jim, did you hear something? Ah, go to sleep. Shh, listen. Stop! Oh. Don't come in here! Stop, I say! It sounds like the housekeeper, Mrs. Hudson. Stop! Stop! Something terrible is happening. If this is one of Mr. Gillette's games, he's really gone too far this time. Games can be very real. And the effect may be much like that of a psychosomatic illness. Not only does the patient have all the symptoms, but he truly feels the pain and the fear. From the time Gillette Castle was under construction in 1914 until today, strange things have happened there. In a few minutes, I'll be back with Act Two, and we'll continue with what has started off as a very eventful night. Shakespeare said about all the world being a stage. Well, William Gillette began play acting and writing when he was a small boy in Hartford. First, it was comedies, but later, his favorite character was Sherlock Holmes, a cool and resourceful man of action. When he decided to retire, his home became a stage, and his famous castle is haunted by the memories he stored up there. 
At the moment, Jim and Pam Watson are caught in the web of his spell. And they've just heard some chilling sounds in the night. Help me! Help me! Jim, what are we going to do? We are going to try to get some sleep. Well, how can we? You heard it. That woman is in trouble. Help me! Help me! We've got to do something. <sighs> Look, let Mr. Gillette handle but this. But he's gone to... Yeah, I know, I know. His secret hideaway. What time is it? Well, how should I know? Well, turn on the light and find out. <sighs> uh, Pam, the light switch doesn't work. Uh, uh, you know, I'll try to reach that floor lamp. Oh, oh. Oh, it's black as pitch in here. Well, get the candles. Um, over there on the dresser. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, I found them. Oh, but it's so dark, I'll never find a match. On the bedside table? No, no, they're in my pants pocket. Now, where... Oh, in my purse. Oh, no, no, you never have any matches. Oh, no, I'll get it. In here somewhere, a pocket flashlight. Oh, good girl. Give it to me. Uh, not much of a beam, but it's better than nothing. Oh, you made a mess of that lamp. Watch out for broken glass. Mm. I'm putting my shoes on. In fact, I'm getting dressed. Well, then I will, too. No, no, you stay in bed. Help me! Oh, that does it. I am going to find out what's going on. You're not going anywhere without me. Hang on to me. Oh, this cold, dark hallway and all those doors. Now, which door? direction where the sound's coming from. This way. No, no, this way. Come this way, over here. Oh, Jim, I, I don't want to go. I'm afraid. We can't stop now. Oh, will you come to my room? But what if you... Uh, uh, Mrs. Hudson? Oh. Mrs. Hudson? Oh. I don't want to know what's happening in there. We have to find out. Mrs. Hudson? What's the meaning of this? We've come to help you. Help me? I was sound asleep, and it's two o'clock in the morning. But, uh, you were crying out for help. I was what? Yeah, well, we thought you were in trouble. You were screaming and pounding on the wall and calling for someone to come. Uh, I assure you, I was fast asleep, and I don't take it kindly to be aroused. Well, how could we have been mistaken? You led us right to your door. No one disturbs me in the middle of the night, not even Mr. Gillette. Well, we would have tried to find him, except... Except he said he was going to... Oh, to Europe, huh? That's where he goes when when there are people he wants to get away from. Uh, by now, he'll be safely in his own bed. And if you know what's good for you, you won't do any more snooping around. Now, you're sure you're all right? Well, I'll be much better if I can get some sleep. And I'll thank you to go back to your room and to stay there. <laughs> Jim, where is our room? Some of the hallways were labeled with street names. Now, what's the name of ours? I haven't the slightest idea. Uh, let's try this. Another of those noiseless doors. Oh, oh you quickly. I can't stand those cats. Uh, uh, oh, and how about this door? Piles hmm. of furniture, all shrouded. Uh, no one's been in here for a long time. Look at the cobwebs. Come away. Those lumpy sheets are like ghosts. Yeah. Well, we've made a wrong turn. I, I, I'm going to try this door. There's something flashing. Yeah. Some kind of lamp. Smells like coal oil. Red lantern. It, look what it spells out on the wall. Danger. Oh, stay back, Pam. What? The floor drops away. There's nothing left but a big black hole. Let's get out of here. <laughs> Please, oh, please, Jim, don't open any more doors. Now, look, Pam, there's one over there. It's halfway opened. And, and a bright light inside. Oh, no, we couldn't be back at Mrs. Hudson's, could we? Not possibly. Anything's possible around here. I wouldn't dare knock. No, I'm not going to. I'm just going to pull the door wide. Oh, Jim, that ceiling floodlight has come back on. This is our room. <laughs> Who'd ever think that a room in this place would look like a home? Be careful, Jim. Yeah, I know, I know, the broken glass. No, I mean, someone may be hiding. Someone who came in while we were gone. Well, you can see for yourself. There's no one here. What about the closet? Yeah, I'll soon find out. Uh, hand me that cane. Oh, there's a skull engraved on the handle. Huh. I barely touched the wall and the door glides open. There is someone in there. Hold tight to the cane. Ah. Uh, 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 oh. 
nothing but a dusty old cape on a hanger. Are you sure? It looked just Listen like... for yourself. These clothes and hats. They're all black as if... As if... Yeah. As if they'd been worn at a funeral. Well, we're going to be worn at one. Uh, come on, Pam. We're getting morbid. I'll... I bet they're just costumes for a play. I wouldn't count on it. Yeah, I'm not counting on anything. First off, I'm going to lock our door. But there isn't any key. No, no, but there's an ingenious wooden arm that comes down like this. There. Now, I defy anyone to break through a barrier as solid as that. <laughs> well, I do feel better. But believe me, I am not going back to bed. Eh, neither am I. So now's your chance to tackle those books. Hmm. Not a bad idea. Maybe if you'd read to me, it would settle my nerves. While I gazed, a feeling of intense cold seized me. I had an impression of an immense and overwhelming power and sensed my utter inadequacy. Oh, stop reading, please. I've had more than enough. Honey, this is a classic. Those murders in the Rue Morgue, and it scares me every time. Mm -hmm. There's a copy of that on the table. <laughs> I know. Please, Jim, find something more cheerful. Okay. Uh, Crimes of Passion? No. This one sounds better. The Minister and the Choir Singer. <laughs> That's the bloodiest of all. True story. Took place in New Jersey. What's on the next shelf? Uh... How the Medicis did it. <laughs> Heavens, it's a recipe book. A whole row of volumes on poisons, including uh, the Poisoner's Handbook, uh, the Poisoner's Dictionary. And this shelf is all witchcraft. Mm, maybe that would be more soothing. No, thank you. <laughs> I think I'll just lie down after all and try to think my own thoughts. <gasps> did you hear it, Jim? Hear what? Starting all over, that awful screaming. Oh, not again. Help me! Sounds as though she means it this time. Yeah, so... Wooden brace off the door. No, don't go out there. Uh, you stay here. Not on your life. But I'm not going to give that mad woman the satisfaction it's of... all right. Though. This time the hall lights are on. Well, then let Mrs. Hudson take care of herself. I'm not going to her room. I'm going to find Mr. Gillette. And I'm going with you. showed us, remember? His room is right here in the middle of the balcony. Yes, yes, something about mirrors. Uh, I hate to do this, but here goes. Come in. His light's on. Uh, uh Mr. Gillette, uh, we're, we're sorry to disturb you, but... We hope uh, you weren't asleep. Not at all. I was reading. Come in, come in and sit down. Why, you're still wearing your city clothes. Uh, yeah, we, uh... Put them on in rather a hurry. Mm, I thought you'd like the pajamas and dressing gowns I provide for my guests. We didn't see any. Didn't you look in the closets? Well, not those terrible black capes and... Oh, good heavens, my error. I thought those things were in another room. Is that why you came to see me? No, no, it wasn't that. It was uh, the screams. Hmm? What are you talking about? Well, we heard cries for help. And the lights went out. Da. Ah. Our electrical system is not always dependable. But the urgent cries for help, didn't you hear them? Didn't hear a thing. Well, we were sure it was Mrs. Hudson, and she sounded in agony. Ah, uh, I'm beginning to understand. She was begging for someone to come to her rescue. And you went to her door and frightened the poor lady out of her wits. No, on the contrary, we were the ones who were scared. Well, she sounded so desperate only when we got there. Occasionally, the dear lady suffers from nightmares. They should be over by now. You mean... She was asleep all the time? Exactly. It happens often. I fear that, well, dark shadows lurk somewhere in Mrs. Hudson's past. But she suits me so admirably, I've never probed into her psyche. I just leave her alone. <laughs> You're making us feel quite foolish. I guess we should apologize for behaving like this, but... We're not used to spending the night in the castle. Well, all the more reason I should make you feel at home. Well, I have a hot plate here and all the fixings over here. How about a cup of nice warm chocolate? Oh, no, thank you. You, Mr. Watson? Uh, thank you, just the same. I, I think we'd uh, better go back to our room and uh, <laughs> make up for some lost sleep. I'll try 
try to get some sleep, but I'm going to keep my clothes on, uh, including my shoes. It's all right now, Pam. We've just had a bad case of jitters. More than that. I feel so strange. Nothing's going to be right until it's daylight and we can get out of here. <laughs> Could anyone have made you drink that cup of chocolate? <laughs> no way. You heard it, didn't you? Of course I heard it. A gunshot. But we're both going to pretend that we didn't. Put that bar back on the door. Watson. Oh. Watson, come to my room and come quickly. No, Jim. Pay no attention. When Mr. Gillette gives a command like that, I've got to go. You mean we do? No, no, no. Not this time, Pam. You'd have to knock me out to make me stay behind. All right. Well, hand me the pistol. It's only a fake. It wouldn't do any good against a real one, but I'd feel a lot better with a gun in my hand. <laughs> Bedroom door's open. Now stay behind me. Uh, Mr. Gillette? He's in bed, all covered up. Mr. Gillette? Uh, m Mr. Gillette, you, you called me. What, what is it? He can't be asleep. But he... He's so still. Mr. Gillette, wake up. Uh, Mr. Gillette? Oh, Jim. He's so pale. No signs of violence. But no... No heartbeat. Is... is he? Yes, pal. No faking it this time. Mr. William Gillette is dead. How's that for a turn of events? Even the best of actors can go too far in attempting to create an illusion of reality. But what is reality, really? We're not even sure what we mean when we talk about real people. Back in 1800, Schiller, the poet, said that in stagecraft, appearance should never attain reality. And he felt that art would be ruined if nature took over. Well, drama thrives upon surprise. And I assure you that more surprises are coming up shortly in Act Three. dawn, with a glimmer of light catching the small paned windows of Gillette Castle. Not only are James and Pamela Watson literally prisoners inside the walls, but their host is lying quite dead in his bed. They tried frantically to find Mrs. Hudson. Their hopes were raised when they found a telephone, but you guessed it. Well, of course it's not working. Ah, that does it. Now, all we can do is wait. Oh, what if no one comes? Well, they have to sooner or later. Maybe hours yet. Let's get as far away from that, that room as possible. I wish I could think of something. Nothing but doors. Wouldn't you think one of them would lead to the outside? Look, Jim. The sign on this hallway says Baker Street. Huh. It would. I bet there's even a number 221B. There is. Hmm. No harm in trying that door. <gasps> Unbelievable. Straight out of the books. The fireplace, his slippers, and pipe. The violin? Huh. And all those papers and bottles that look like chemicals. What a stage set. Good morning. Oh, oh. Oh, well, thank God. Oh. Mr. Gillette, you've done it again. I beg your pardon. <laughs> You're alive. Well, of course I'm alive. Although I am not in the habit of rising this early in the morning. <laughs> you are truly remarkable. <laughs> and this is worth everything that's happened. What a performance. Young man, could it be possible that you don't know who I am? <laughs> of course we know. You're Sherlock Holmes. Uh, uh, that is, you're Mr. Gillette pretending to be Sherlock Holmes. No one pretends to be Sherlock Holmes. Your name could be Watson, that's common enough. But I am the sole individual who has the combined first and last names of Sherlock. And home. Uh, come on now, Mr. Gillette. You've had your fun with us. It's been a long night. Now, let's just, uh, have a good laugh over the way you fooled us. Well, this becomes more interesting by the moment. Sit down. Sit down, both of you, and tell me more about this Mr. Gillette. Well, he is you, sir, Mr. William Gillette, and there can be no question in anyone's mind that you are a great actor. My profession is not acting, although there are times when I am called upon to use the actor's skills. <laughs> Your makeup is simply terrific. Every single detail.
tail. Young lady, you've never seen me in disguise. But you look so different when you're Mr. Gillette. I am losing my patience. If there is an actor masquerading as Sherlock Holmes, he is an imposter and must be brought to justice. Where did you meet this man? And then, sir, as we came down the long hallway, we saw the sign Baker Street and the number on the door. Mr. Watson, you are presently inside my landlady's house. Draw the curtains over there, and you will look out on one of the most famous streets in London. Jim, look. Just like a London street. Only it can't be. I'd open the window, but that's dangerous for a man in my position. You... You don't believe what we've just told you, do you? Well, indeed, it may have elements of truth. But I don't accept this fantasy about a castle and screams in the night. We explained that Mrs. Hudson was having a nightmare. That's another thing which makes your case more serious. Mrs. Hudson never has nightmares. How do you know? Elementary, my dear sir. There appear, however, to be two impostors involved. I suppose you will claim that this Mrs. Hudson is an actress who shares a castle with your Mr. Gillette? Oh, no. Well, she's the housekeeper. Never fear. Never fear. I'll get to the bottom of this. And if I'm not mistaken, here comes the answer to our puzzle. It, it's an old-fashioned carriage. Stopping right in front of the house. Kindly step back from the window. Enemies of mine waste hours across the street peering in this direction. Come in, Mrs. Hudson. But sorry to break in on you so early, Mr. Holmes. You know I'll never bother you uh, until you're ready for breakfast. Yes, yes, but this is an emergency. Oh, indeed it is. Oh, Oh, excuse me. I, I didn't know there'd be people here at this time of day. They appear to have an emergency, too. I'm told that they spent the night in a castle. But you spent the night at your sister's. You knew. Call it a logical conclusion. Uh, Mr. Holmes, I, I must go down to the kitchen and get the fire started. But then, I if you could spare me a few moments... Come right back. I'm sure what you have to say concerns everyone in this room. Oh, Mr. Holmes, the most... A terrible thing has happened at my sister's house. But your sister is unharmed. Oh, no, it's not her. But you know she takes in boarders, same as I do. Uh, and this man hadn't been here very long. What sort of man? Oh, a proper gentleman. Very thin, uh, dark hair. But he, he was almost as tall as you. You speak in the past tense. Mm. I assume there has been an accident. Well, that's it. We don't rightly know what happened. Come now, Mrs. Hudson. You were there. Well, in the middle of the night, he called out for my sister and, and told her he was not feeling well. He said he'd sent for the doctor and he asked her to let him in when he came. Ah, go on. Well, I heard the doorbell ring. It woke me up. And then your sister took the doctor into the boarder's room? But there were two of them. Two doctors? Uh, the doctor had a woman with him said she was his nurse. Very interesting. My sister left him in the sick man's room, and then she and I were talking in the back hall when we... Heard a gunshot? Well, I, I don't think it was a gunshot. Ah. More like a, a, a shutter banging. Mm. But right afterward, the doctor and nurse came running down the stairs and rushed out the front door into the street. Well, of course, you didn't follow them. It was still dark, and you were in your night clothes. Oh, we went straight to Mr... Oh. You see, I'm so rattled, I've forgotten the poor man's name. Well, we went right to his room, and he was in bed, all covered up. We called. We, we tried to wake him. But it was all so horrible, Mr. Holmes, because... Because he was dead. Here, here, Mrs. Hudson, now drink this. It'll make you feel much better. Poor lady nearly passed out. Do you blame her? Now tell me, Mrs. Hudson, what was this boarder's occupation? Well, he seemed to be a gentleman of leisure. Stayed home every day, he did. Oh, that is every day but Saturdays. But he went out every evening. Is that right? Well, it seemed so odd. Every night of the week. Around theater time, I imagine. And his name was Mr. Gillette? Of course. Oh, I remember now. But how did you know? Mm, call it deduction. Not Mr. William Gillette. Oh, well, I wouldn't know his first name. But my sister could tell you. It, it couldn't be. Oh, yes, it could. Now, Mrs. Hudson, did you or your sister send for the police? Oh, no, not yet. It only just happened. My sister runs a very respectable house. 
She don't want any crowds coming around or any scandal. Were there any signs of violence? Well, Mr. Gillette's room was neat as a pin. No blood? No weapons? No injury to the body? Oh, I couldn't bear to look. But my sister said he didn't have a mark on him. Well, then it isn't it possible that he died in his sleep? Oh, he was wide awake when my sister saw him. And then that doctor and nurse, were there, they were in such a hurry. Mm -hmm. What did this man and woman look like? Well, I didn't see them. But my sister said they were both quite young. Well, I would guess about the age of this lady and gentleman here. Just as I thought. Oh, and, and they wouldn't have gone running off like that unless something was wrong. I, well, would they? I mean, that's why I came right away to you, Mr. Holmes. Oh, if you could just find them. Mm -hmm. Perhaps I already have. Oh, you must be joking, Mr. Holmes. Well, I know you're a great detective, but how could you possibly... Run along now, run along. Go back to your sister's house. Tell her to keep the door to that room closed tight and to go about her business as if nothing had happened. But you will help us. Yes, yes. I'll be along just as soon as I finish my business here. <laughs> Well, it seems that we have more than one actor in this play. Well, just what do you mean? Your whereabouts this past night has shifted to a different stage. Well, you aren't connecting us with this, this murder at Mrs. Hudson's sister's. You do assume, then, that Mr. Gillette was murdered. Which Mr. Gillette are you talking about? My dear Mrs. Watson, you can't believe that all of this is sheer coincidence. Well, what else could it be? Item one. A sound like a shot was heard. She said it was a banging shutter. Very similar to the clap made by certain pistols. We were nowhere near a house in London. Item two. A talented actor is found dead in his bed, and his name is William Gillette. Pardon me, sir, but I believe it was you who put that idea in Mrs. Hudson's head. Watson, would you dare impugn my methods of deduction? Uh, of course not, Mr. Holmes. But in this case... Item three. Two young people, male and female, discover the body and leave the victim's room in great haste. But Jim is not a doctor and I'm not a nurse. More likely you than another couple. After all, the Watsons come from a distinguished medical family. Sir, I assure you, I am not... Never a... mind, never mind. Item by item, there is but one case, not two. No signs of struggle. No visible injury. Oh, it's all very clear. I must now keep my promise to Mrs. Hudson. It may seem clear to you, Mr. but... Mr. Holmes, we came to you first. You must help us. The body we found was right here in Mr. Gillette's castle. My dear young lady, in the castles of the mind... Many things can happen. You don't believe us, do you? I believe that when you wanted your Mr. Gillette to be there, he was, and you placed him in a romantic setting. But we were in the castle. Call it what you will. You were prisoners and obviously wanted your jailer out of the way. We went to Mr. Gillette for help. Fiendishly clever, that man. He was trying to trick you. <laughs> I don't doubt that. Well, then let me have the incriminating evidence. I don't know what you're talking about. The pistol. You have it in your pocket? Well, this is nothing but a harmless piece of wood. I, I, I want to keep it as a souvenir. The last thing in the world to be found on your person. Give it to me. Never mind the doorbell. There's no one inside, and I have the key. Well, well, it seems to be a commotion at the front door, and I must be on my way. Well, will you take us with you? Not where I'm going, but don't worry about being apprehended. All we want to do is go home. Scotland Yard would like to know your whereabouts, but I'll put them off the scent. Any imposter who masquerades as Sherlock Holmes deserves to be put out of the way. But what will become of us? You two go out that door, and I'll just slip down the passageway behind the fireplace. Believe me, this has been a most refreshing encounter. <laughs> new man, aren't you? Yes, ma'am. First day on the job. We've been short-handed, and we closed up early last evening. There's lots to be done before the first visitors arrive. Now, come this way. Big, isn't it? First, we check the great hall. Oh, wouldn't you know, these tourists always leave something behind. Oh, here's a pair of dark glasses and a key ring. Hmm, some sort of jewel on it. Oh, I, I don't think it's valuable. However, I'll show you where we keep these things with the rest of the lost and found. Mr. Holmes said we should leave by this door. Uh, 
I'm not sure I want to. We can't stay here. If you won't open the door, I will. Oh. Oh, Jim. It's all right. It opens into the hallway of the castle. I'll show you the library. And listen. We're all right, Jim. That's the guide. We're safe. I'm going to yell. No, 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 Pam, Pam. No, keep, keep quiet. Well, I'm going to let them know we're here. Come back. Back into the Sherlock Holmes room. Don't make a sound. Have you lost your mind? I think I'm just finding it. Uh, quick, come over here. I don't want to spend another minute in this room. But I found another way out. Mr. Gillette must have used it often. Here, here. Behind the fireplace. Jim, all we have to do is Honey, call the guide. We can't be found in I'm here. I'm going... Just wait. There. You see? It's a secret staircase. <laughs> and no cobwebs on this one. I don't ever want to see another secret staircase. You're going down this one. Oh, no, I'm not. Pam, we've got to. Now, uh, come on, take my hand. But the guide now, is coming. Hurry, it's our only way out. No one in the world would believe us if we told them what happened here last night. <laughs> for one, am a believer, with reservations, of course. I do believe that a sense of wonder helps keep healthy minds in balance. Playwright Christopher Fry wrote an article on that subject in which he said, the first of our senses, which we should take care never to let rust through disuse, is that sixth sense, the imagination. That's what we're up to in presenting these dramas. Our way of keeping the wheels of your imagination from rusting. I'll be back with a further comment. There is a Gillette Castle towering above the Connecticut River near the town of East Haddam. The secret stairways are there, the intricate wood paneling and colored glass, fascinating memorabilia everywhere, and, of course, the Sherlock Holmes room, a replica of the Baker Street lodgings as described by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. Tours of the castle are conducted daily throughout the summer. I assure you, it's a haunting experience. Our cast included Kevin McCarthy, Jada Rowland, Russell Horton, and Carol Titel. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.